When we talk about the Antichrist, we are not just dealing with a dark character from the scriptures, but with an enigma that spans generations, arousing curiosity, fear, and conspiracy theories. After all, where exactly will the Antichrist emerge? The answer to this question isn't as simple as pointing at a map. Many believe he will come from a specific place, but clues in Scripture lead us to think he could be closer than we imagine, disguised among us, blending into our society, slowly gaining strength. But if he is a world leader born in the midst of decadence, what can we do to identify signs of this possible rise? Don't prophecies leave clear clues? Maybe so. And that is the big question that leads us to the next point. How to recognize those who play a similar role in current times. There is something deeper hidden in these ancient words which can help us decipher the enigma of the final leaders. The Bible in its prophecies mentions intriguing figures who will appear on the global stage in the end times. Two characters stand out in the book of Revelation, the beast and the false prophet. These two are described as the great controllers of the world and are considered antichrists due to their antagonism to Jesus Christ. But who are they? Well, we're not talking about mystical and fantasy characters. These figures are, in fact, representations of very real and powerful leaders, those who may arise in our midst with grandiose promises of peace and prosperity. They stand out not because they look like villains, but because they appear to be true saviors. The beast is described as someone who will lead a coalition of nations and who will bring power and authority. Nowadays, we could make an analogy to political leaders who, from time to time, seem to unite different nations around them, right? The prophecy speaks of someone who will use his charisma and influence to attract global attention, a political figure who knows exactly what people want to hear. The very idea of a beast conveys a sense of brute force and absolute control, something that could manifest itself through tyrannical leadership or overwhelming military might. The false prophet is the one who appears to support the beast, a religious leader who deceives the nations, convincing them that that political power is in fact divine and blessed. Imagine someone like a great spiritual leader, who everyone believes to be the voice of God, supporting a political leader who stands out for his strength and charisma. This alliance becomes irresistible for the masses, as it unites the power of faith with the power of the state. A practical example of this, to better illustrate, would be the union between influential religious leaders and rulers, something that we have seen occur throughout history in different contexts and periods. The cooperation between these two characters' politics and religion united for a greater goal is what makes this prophecy so frightening. The power that the beast possesses is legitimized by the spiritual authority of the false prophet, creating an illusion of holiness and divine purpose. People, seeking security and answers to their problems, end up being led by these figures who seem to offer miraculous solutions. And this is where we see the risk. Powerful leadership always becomes even more dangerous when coupled with religious legitimacy. This dynamic between the beast, and the false prophet, is something that can teach us a lot about the power of influence and manipulation. In current times, we must be attentive to any figure who manages to bring together political and spiritual control. The temptation to follow promises of peace and prosperity, without question, is one of the greatest dangers that the prophecies try to warn us about. But what does all this have to do with end-time Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar? Ah, uh, that's a fascinating question that leads us directly to the next point. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of ancient Babylon, is a historical figure who symbolizes not only power, but also human arrogance in the face of the divine. In the context of prophecies, Nebuchadnezzar and his vast empire are often used as a metaphor for the power that will emerge in the last days. Think of Babylon not just as a city full of riches and ancient glories, but as an archetype of a global empire that will seek absolute control over the nations, a power structure that will rise again at the end of time. This end-time Babylon is not necessarily a specific place, but a state of mind and a system of oppression.
Nebuchadnezzar's pride is reported in several passages of the Bible, including the famous episode in which he builds a golden statue, ordering everyone to worship it. It reminds us how intoxicating a thing power can be. The king of Babylon believed he was above everything, even God himself. Doesn't it sound familiar when we think about some modern leaders who believe they are invincible, defying everything and everyone, guided only by their own ambition? Yes, the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar, this thirst for control and lack of humility, is destined to resurface in the last days. And what would this Babylon of the end times be? For many scholars of the scriptures, this concept refers to a global system that will unite political, economic, and spiritual power, seeking to subject all humanity to its control. Today, we can look at the great powers, the international alliances, and see a seed of this system. Imagine a global government that controls trade, religion, and even individual freedoms. It is not difficult to see how such a structure could emerge, especially in a global crisis scenario where people are desperately seeking stability. Just as Nebuchadnezzar faced divine judgment for his inordinate pride, so too is latter-day Babylon destined to face collapse. However, until this happens, there will be a period of immense and seductive power where many will be deceived. The prophet Daniel in the king's court interpreted his dreams and warned of what was to come, and in the same way, current prophecies warn us to be vigilant and prepared. The parallel is clear. The same kind of pride and desire for domination that drove Nebuchadnezzar is still alive and will manifest itself again on a much larger scale. Imagine for a moment that biblical prophecies do not speak of a mystical, distant place, but of a region we know, of a power structure that already exists. It may be shocking, but the Antichrist, as the scriptures describe it, must emerge from a complex web of intrigue, political alliances, and, most importantly, an uncontrollable desire to control. Could it be a European leader? Perhaps a new charismatic ruler in the Middle East? The clues are all there, but they require a closer look to understand the pattern that is forming before our eyes. But what exactly can we expect? There is a prophecy that speaks of a specific period, the seven times, that relates to this resurgence of Babylon. Perhaps it is a clue as to when and how this will occur, something that already begins to prepare us to understand the scale of these events and their chronology. And that's where the prophecy of the seven times and twenty-five hot and twenty years comes into play, linking the past to the future in an almost supernatural way. The seven times prophecy is one of the most fascinating and complex elements of Scripture, which directly connects ancient Babylon to the events of the end times. In biblical interpretation, the seven times symbolize a period of punishment and fall in power, but also a cycle that can be repeated throughout history until the divine will is completed. This specific cycle is often related to the 25-20 year period, which seems to suggest a God-determined interval for a power similar to the original Babylon to re-emerge on the world stage. It's as if the prophecy is giving us a timeline, an invisible clock that ticks silently as events unfold. Imagine for a moment, ancient Babylon with its grand empire represented human power taken to the extreme. Nebuchadnezzar, as a symbol of this power, was punished for seven times, an event that was not just a personal matter, but a metaphor for something much greater that would come to fruition in the future. These seven times would then be a period that would lead to the resurgence of a new Babylon, which is not simply a physical kingdom, but a global system that attempts to unite all humanity under a banner of absolute control. This timeline, 25-20 years, seems to point to the return of a power that, like the original, will challenge divine sovereignty. If we consider these 25 and 20 years from a historical point of view, Scholars generally calculate that there is an interesting correspondence between the fall of Babylon and events that occurred in modern times. After the fall of Nebuchadnezzar's power, there are those who say that this cycle would be completed in a new era, where a leader would emerge as a reflection of the old Babylonian king. 
It's amazing to think how such an ancient prophecy can have such precise parallels with our recent history. This resurgence, according to some interpreters, began to take shape during the 20th century, bringing with it the promise of a new type of global leadership. And why is this relevant? Because these cycles help us understand that history has a tendency to repeat itself, especially when past mistakes are not recognized. The power that was once concentrated in Babylon in the past now seeks to manifest itself through new global structures, alliances, and treaties that promise unity, but which, deep down, hide the desire for control. This idea of a 2,520-year cycle may seem far-fetched to some, but it is no coincidence that certain political figures have, in recent times, taken on roles that resonate with ancient prophecies. If you're wondering when exactly this starts to materialize into real events, one of the most significant dates mentioned is the year 1982, when a prominent political figure appeared to fit the predictions. Are we seeing the rebirth of Babylon's power? We'll explore this in the next point where a modern name, Helmut Kohl, enters the scene, surprising everyone by fulfilling an ancient prophecy almost exactly. In 1982, the world witnessed an event that, for many prophecy scholars, was an important milestone in the fulfillment of the 25-20-year cycle, the rise of Helmut Kohl to power in West Germany. For those who look at the details of the story in light of scripture, this moment is seen as a second fulfillment, something that aligns with the resurgence of a new Babylon under the leadership of a prominent figure. Helmut Kohl, in assuming leadership, not only influenced Germany, but also had a profound impact on all of Europe, paving the way for what many see as the rebuilding of a unified power, just as foretold. Helmut Kohl is a fascinating figure in this context. He was not just a competent politician. His leadership marked the beginning of a new era for Europe, a period of reunification and growth on a continental scale. In a prophetic analysis, Kohl's coming to power in this particular year seems much more than a simple historical coincidence. He represented a crucial link in the chain of events that began way back when with Nebuchadnezzar and ancient Babylon. In a complex political scenario, Kohl emerged as the leader capable of uniting what was divided, just like the emerging new Babylon promised by the prophecies. During his time in power, Kohl not only led German reunification after the fall of the Berlin Wall, but also helped strengthen the European alliance, setting the stage for the formation of a new world power. The way he became a figure of consensus and leadership, with influence that crossed borders, fits perfectly into the narrative of the prophecies of a new centralized power, which promises unity and strength. Of course, we're not talking about an overtly evil leader, but from someone who, through his actions, helped shape a system that, one day, could be used as a tool of control, as the prophecy warns. Imagine the impact of this movement in practical terms. European nations, which for centuries had been divided, began to see a new future through integration and the promise of a common market. Kohl, in leading this process, ended up becoming the architect of the modern European Union, something that many see as the materialization of a new Babylon. This emerging power is not necessarily an evil figure per se, but the union of political and economic forces around a single purpose, which echoes Nebuchadnezzar's ancient dreams. The issue that few really want to face is that, while we wait for great signs, perhaps the emergence of the Antichrist is taking place subtly, step by step, through systems that promote unification under the pretext of peace and prosperity. If we look at the global alliances and organizations that promise a better world, we begin to notice the existence of a silent agenda that, if fitted with the prophecies, can be frighteningly familiar. And that's where the doubt comes in. Are we prepared to recognize the emergence of this figure, or will we be seduced by false promises? And what does this mean for our future? When we look at Helmut Kohl and his rise, we see not just a leader, but a forerunner of what could be the world control predicted by the prophets. The creation of the European Union is an important step in this process, 
but there is much more to be discussed about the role of a united Europe and its destiny as a new world power. What role will the European Union have in the context of the final prophecies? And what are the signs we should look for? We will explore this more deeply in the next topic, where the connection between the European Union and the new Babylon becomes even more evident. The creation of the European Union is one of the most defining events of modern times, and for many, it is a clear indication that the new Babylon is forming right before our eyes. Helmut Kohl's role in founding and consolidating this bloc cannot be underestimated, as he helped transform Europe into a unified territory, where borders began to disappear and a new identity began to be shaped. This union of European countries around a common goal reflects, in some ways, the spirit of end-time Babylon, a central power that seeks influence and control on a scale that transcends national borders. The European Union, with its economic, political, and even cultural treaties, presents itself as a great world power, promising peace, stability, and prosperity for its members. Now think about it. How many times in history have we heard promises of unity that turned into something darker? We are not talking about an evil project in its essence, but rather about how the idea of control can subtly grow until it becomes something totalizing. The new Babylon, according to the prophecies, does not arise from a violent imposition, but rather from an invitation to unity that is difficult to resist. So the European Union's promise of prosperity and peace can be a double-edged sword. It is undeniable that the European Union has brought many advantages to its citizens. From free trade to freedom of movement between countries, the idea of a Europe without borders is extremely seductive. But looking from the prophetic side, this unification also brings with it a considerable risk. Excessive power in the hands of a few. When financial and political control is concentrated in a common structure, such as the European Union, the prophecy suggests that it creates a perfect basis for a future world leader, one who would be the Antichrist to emerge, taking advantage of this entire infrastructure. Already assembled. This movement towards a global union has been attempted in the past in various ways, but it is the European Union that comes closest to the vision of a central power that can dictate rules to different nations. We can see, for example, how decisions made in Brussels impact the lives of millions, even those without direct representation. It is in this context that the prophecy about the new Babylon takes shape, a leadership that goes beyond the national interest and that has the power to influence and control entire countries. If one day a charismatic and ambitious leader takes the reins of this union, would we be closer to what the prophecy predicts? This European Union is therefore a harbinger of even greater power to come. But before we can see who this figure of absolute power will be, we must prepare ourselves for the warnings that the scriptures offer us. The prophecies talk about false prophets, religious leaders who will support this new world order, and in the next points, we will deepen our understanding of how religion and politics will intertwine in this final scenario. The scriptures are clear in warning us about the presence of false prophets who will emerge in the end times, being crucial elements in consolidating the power of the Antichrist. These false prophets are described as religious leaders who, with their ability to persuade and charm, will be able to manipulate millions. They will not present themselves as villains, on the contrary. They will bring an aura of kindness, of spiritual authority, and will gain the trust of many. Imagine a religious leader who seems to have all the answers, who performs signs and wonders, and who speaks with such conviction that his words ring out as indisputable truths. This is exactly how deception will gain strength, winning hearts and minds. The role of false prophets is essential because they will provide spiritual legitimacy to the Antichrist, endorsing his actions and leading people to believe that he is the Savior everyone is waiting for. We have seen in history how religious figures can unite and manipulate the masses, even in situations where power is used for nefarious purposes. Think of the great historical alliances between religious and political leaders, how the power of faith was, in many cases, 
used to legitimize wars and persecutions. It is this same principle that will be at play in the end times, a powerful spiritual leader supporting a political ruler with promises of a kingdom of peace. The presence of false prophets serves to remind us how easy it is to be deceived when what is offered is security and hope. Imagine a scenario of chaos where humanity finds itself on the brink of collapse political, economic, and environmental. In this scenario, a religious figure appears who manages to bring comfort, promise stability, and, most importantly, point to a political leader as the solution to all these problems. This is how the seduction of deception begins, and this is why the scriptures insist that we be vigilant. The Antichrist will not come alone. He will be accompanied by these figures who will serve as his spiritual ambassadors. These false prophets will also play a crucial role in getting people to accept signs and marks that, according to prophecy, symbolize loyalty to the Antichrist. They will convince that these signs are necessary to guarantee security and belonging to a new world order. Think of it as propaganda for a new system that promises to solve all of humanity's problems, but at a price. The power of a religious leader's word is immense, especially in times of despair, and this influence will be used to make people complacent and receptive to the control of the Antichrist. Many expect to see a clearly demonic figure, something that will alert us instantly. But what if the Antichrist is an ordinary man, a leader who promises precisely what the world longs for? Security, stability, progress? Perhaps it is someone who, at this very moment, is climbing the ladder of power, appearing to be the solution that everyone is waiting for. And this is where the scriptures become an essential key, helping us to discern that which, to the naked eye, appears harmless, but which, in essence, carries intentions that are completely contrary to the divine purpose. The warning is clear. We must pay attention to the signs. The Bible prepares us to recognize these false prophets, not by the words they say, but by the fruits they produce. Any message that exalts a human power above the divine is an indication of deception. Now, if all these warnings come true, how can we be prepared? How to discern in a world desperately searching for a leader? The answer to this lies in the scriptures themselves and in a deep understanding of the signs of the end times, which are increasingly evident. We have reached the end of this journey of discovery and reflection, but the real change begins now, with you. The prophecies we discuss are not just tales of the past or vague predictions of the future. They are clear warnings about what is before us, just waiting for us to position ourselves. If there is a lesson in all of this, it is that knowledge is our best defense. Are you prepared to apply what you learned? Are you ready to question what seems obvious, to resist easy promises and to look deeper into global alliances and movements? The choice of how to react to what is being built around us is ours. Will we continue passively, accepting every promise of peace and prosperity without investigating its roots? Or will we choose to stay vigilant, discerning the intentions behind each figure who seeks power and influence? The Bible encourages us to be vigilant not to be deceived by those who seem to have all the answers. This is the time to choose a more active posture, to connect with the truth and to prepare yourself spiritually. I want to hear from you. How can you apply this knowledge in your daily life? Who are the power figures you believe in, and how do they align with the prophecies we've seen here? These questions are provocative because they require a critical look, something that goes against the tide of the modern world which prefers quick and comfortable solutions. True transformation requires courage and reflection. It requires you to sign up for the path of vigilance, knowledge, and connection to something greater. If you want to continue learning more, following in-depth analyzes about the signs of the times and the prophecies that are being fulfilled, subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications and always be one step ahead understanding global events through a perspective that few have the courage to explore. Let's seek the truth together, understand the signs, and prepare ourselves, not to live in fear, but to live in knowledge. The future can be challenging, but with the right understanding, it can also be an opportunity for meaningful change. So where will the Antichrist emerge? The answer to this question is not simple 
and requires a deep analysis of the signals around us. Stay until the end of the video, as I will reveal the clues that the scriptures give us about the origins of this enigmatic leader, and you will be in shock. The Antichrist, according to the scriptures, is a character who has always attracted a mix of fascination and fear. But after all, who is this controversial figure? According to biblical texts, he is described as one who will rise up against God and deceive humanity. Its emergence, heralded by prophecies, goes back to the idea of a leader who will gain power in chaotic times, someone who embodies opposition to divine purpose. Interestingly, many associate its origin with end-time Babylon, a place that, in the Bible, is often cited as a symbol of moral decadence and rebellion against the divine. The scriptures suggest that this world leader will not emerge from just any environment, but from a power structure prepared to manipulate the masses. Imagine, for example, a charismatic leader who emerges during a time of global crisis, offering seemingly magical solutions. It's as if he were that politician who everyone thinks is the solution to problems, someone who, with his articulate speech and seductive promises, convinces millions that he is the chosen one to bring peace. End-time Babylon, in this context, represents more than a physical place. It is a spiritual state of corruption and oppression. Understanding the figure of the Antichrist is not just a matter of looking to the future. It is also a reflection on the present. Think of the great power structures, the economic conglomerates, and even the political figures who try to control global narratives. Who today would you consider as a potential Babylonian leader? This question is not intended to point fingers, but to open your eyes to how power can be seductive and at the same time dangerous. The Antichrist, in a way, is the culmination of everything that represents human pride and vanity in its maximum expression. And this is exactly why so many are deceived. He does not appear as an obvious villain, but as a savior. Someone who promotes unity, who stands as a defender of the weak and oppressed, but who, in reality, has a hidden purpose. Prophecies throughout the centuries point to this figure who will gather not only political, but also spiritual power. The great danger is its ability to enchant, to speak to people's hearts, while leading them towards a path of destruction.